So this is then the Year 7 Elements and Atoms Knowledge Test. It's kind of like the fundamentals of everything that there is to do with chemistry. Right, so an element is one type of atom. And it cannot be made, cannot be made simpler. God, my writing is tough. Don't want to know. A compound is two or more elements. I'm going to do this in a different color. Chemically combined. A mixture is two or more elements not chemically combined. Okay, so that's the big difference. <clears throat> so what you can do with a compound is you can separate them. You can't separate them. With a mixture, you can separate them. Prepare the particle diagram for iron, sulfur, a mixture of iron and sulfur, and iron sulfide. All right, so what you'll have for iron is you'll have nice orderly rows. For sulfur, you'll have nice orderly rows. Okay, I'll put sulfur there, uh, go back to iron, I'll put Fe there. If I've then got a mixture of iron and sulfur, what I could do is I could just do it like this. Okay, just kind of random. Chucking a bit of red there as well, a bit of sulfur. Okay, what they are is they're kind of random. And what you could do is that is um, iron plus a bit of sulfur. What you could do theoretically, you could uh, separate them out. Good way of doing that is just get a magnet. Get a magnet, and theoretically, what would happen is then all the green bits would come out and stick to the magnet, leaving the sulfur. Iron sulfide, Fe. S is where they're chemically combined, and in a way, it won't be quite exactly like this. They will then be in nice rows, right, and they will all be chemically combined together, all stuck together, right, and if you get a magnet next to it, we'll just take the whole thing. Right. A is an element. B is a compound, right, there's two things then stuck together. C is also a compound. Now, because there's lots and lots of different things in there, D is a mixture. Complete the table. What did these people suggest? Right. So this comes up all the time in all sorts of different topics. Right. So we'll start off with Democritus is atomos. Right. And what that means is it means cannot be cut. Right. So he kind of came up with the original theory. John Dalton, he came up with the idea that the atom was a solid sphere. Okay, so it's like that, solid sphere, nice circle, all filled in. All right. J. Day Thompson, he came up with the principle of a plum, that's plump, plum pudding. Okay, and I'll talk about that again in a minute. Rutherford, he came up with three ideas, right? Number one, he thought that um, most of the atom was empty space. He thought that it was a positive centre. And number three, he came up with the idea that um, there was a solid centre. Boer. Okay. Boer, he came up with the idea that electrons... We're in shells. Whoops. And Chadwick, he was then the guy who came up with the idea of neutrons. <clears throat> what we're going to do now is we're going to compare the plum pudding model and the nuclear model. All right, so plum pudding. All right, so what the plum pudding has got is, I'll just circle this in orange, it's got negative sort of chunks in it, a bit like the fruit in a plum pudding. <clears throat> and then all the other bits around it, like the doughy bits, are then kind of positively charged. The nuclear model starts with a positive nucleus, and around the outside, there's then shells. And in those shells, we've then got our electrons. 
however many electrons there might be. Now, the comparison is, firstly, um, the electrons. So, electrons on the plum pudding are, so electrons are on the outside. The electrons on the nuclear are in shells. The next one is the fact that on the plum pudding, it's kind of like got a, it's like a positive sphere, right? Because all these kind of bits here are all the positive bits. On this one, we've now got a positive nucleus, which is that there. The final bit of it is, on this one, there is no protons, neutrons, or electrons. So I've kind of named these as electrons here, right, but they're kind of not really, right, it's not really sort of associated. I've just called them electrons just to make it look as if there's a negative charge in there. And this one, that has protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons in the nucleus, neutrons in the nucleus, and electrons flying around the outside. Describe how to calculate the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in an atom of fluorine. <clears throat> right, so fluorine, right, I'll just get my periodic table. I look at my periodic table for fluorine, and it is 19, 9, F. All right, and then what I'll do is I'll go pen. Okay, protons, electrons, neutrons. Protons is always the smaller number. Electrons is always the same. Neutrons is, let's do this in red, that number, which is 19, but then you take away the number of protons, which equals 10. Complete the table. Right, so what we're doing now is we're doing protons, electrons, and neutrons. Charge on a proton, plus one. Charge on an electron, minus one. Charge on a neutron, nothing. Think about it, positive proton, neutral neutron. The mass of a proton is one. The mass of a neutron is one. They are kind of relative to each other. The mass of an electron is zero, or it can be almost zero, or it can be negligible. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw the electron configuration of argon. So first thing I do is I go 40, 18, argon. Then what I do is I'm going to do the pen. So the pen, protons is 18, because it's this number here. Electrons is the same, 18. And neutrons is 40, take away 18, which equals 22. But for this, I'm not bothered about that, and I'm not bothered about that. All I'm bothered about is the electrons. So to draw it, what I do is I do argon in the middle, and there's my first shell. I've got 18 electrons to draw. Okay, so what colour should we do? Let's do it in a bit of pink. All right, so I'm going to put one there, and I'm going to put one there. Opposite sides, so it looks nice and neat. Cross that out, I've got 16 left. Draw myself another shell, and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I've put another load of electrons in, 8 left. And remember, as soon as that outer shell, that second shell, is full with 8 electrons, I then have to draw another one. I've got 8 left, so I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All the electrons are in. It's a full shell because that shell will only take eight. So my electron configuration is two from the first one here and here. And then it goes to eight, eight. That's the electron configuration of an atom of iron. Calculate the relative formula mass of the following. Right now, I'm not going to do all of them, right? Because you've got to kind of work these out. So I'm going to skip those two, right? And I'm going to do sodium chloride. And I'm going to do the aluminium one as well. So, the way that this works is you go to a periodic table and you find the element, and you find the biggest number, which is the mass number. And for sodium, it is 23. And for chlorine, it's a weird number, it's 35.5. To do the relative formula mass, I add 23 to 35.5, which is 58.5. Then, the harder one is then aluminium sulfate. 
Okay, so I'm just going to put here aluminium, I'm going to put sulfur, and I'm going to put oxygen. And I'm then going to work out how many of each there are. That two says there's two aluminiums. Then what you've got is you've got this three on the outside here, and you multiply that by three by everything that's in the bracket. So because the sulfur hasn't got a number, that means a one. So you do three times one, three sulfurs. And it's three times four, which makes 12 oxygens. Then I multiply it by the mass number of each one. So the mass of aluminium is 27. The mass of sulfur is 32. And the mass of oxygen is 16. 2 times 27 is 54. 3 times 32 is 96. 12 times 16 is 192. Add them all together and you get the answer out as 342. Right. Three uh, key words. <clears throat> a formula that shows the relative number of atoms of each element in a compound is the chemical formula. That's what we just looked at. A group of two or more atoms strongly joined together, chemically combined, a molecule. Periodic table, the table of all the elements. And there then the key words. Now, what you've got to do now is you've got to know this, that was then the basics of chemistry. You must understand exactly what's going on with that, with the, the subatomic particles of protons, electrons, neutrons, and calculating the relative formula mass, right? It is absolutely the key to everything to do with chemistry.